Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Peter Rose. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Peter Rose from Blackstone, and among other things, we are the world's largest investor in real estate, which we do primarily on behalf of public pension plans, firefighters, nurses, and other civil servants. When we began the renovation of our building at 5 Bryant Park, we had no idea we'd be digging for treasure. Beneath half a century of siding, we uncovered a vibrant mid-century glass mural by the artist Max Spavak, depicting New York's historic textile industry. We researched it, read the New York Times, consulted with art experts. We rapidly came to the conclusion that we had to save it and restore it to its pristine condition. Now, please welcome David Dunlap, the New York Times reporter, whose passionate campaign for the mural inspired us to restore it and, and bring it to public view, and the craftsman, Steve Miotto, who is overseeing the restoration for a conversation about the mural. Before introducing, the, having these two people come on stage, let me just say how lucky we are in New York to have these two people. Steve is a craftsman who could have fitted right in as a master in the Italian Renaissance. And is there anyone in this room who does not open his or her New York Times on Thursday and read the lapidary prose of Dave Dunlap as he advocates for yet another endangered treasure in the city and marvel? We're extremely lucky to have them both. Well, I think I'm, I've just been given way too much credit, and the press has been given way too much credit for doing something that, uh, that Blackstone understood that if, if it hadn't been done, that it really had a treasure on its hand, right. no, amount of, uh, no amount of pressure or, or pleading uh, could have achieved what they achieved. But it was your participation that really made a critical difference. And tell, tell us all something about the connection you believe you have to the origins right. of that. Well, the, the, yeah, the first phone call I got was from the architect. And he asked me about a mural. He asked if I did restorations. And I said, yeah, I do it you know, often. And uh, he starts talking about this mural that they found. And he's telling me the whole story of it, how they took down the metal facade and they found this mosaic. And then they asked, then I said, well, you know, whose mural was it? And they said, Max Spivak. I go, well, I knew Max Spivak as a little boy. He was blown away, and, and uh, I said, yeah, it was my godfather's company, Venetian Art Mosaics, that did many mosaics in New York City. I said, Max was their client and a very good friend, and numerous occasions at Christmas parties at the, at the studio, even at my godfather's country home, I would meet Max. And so it was, uh, it, it was a great thing, and, and I had repaired something from, uh, that Max had done previously for the Municipal Art Society, up uh, on the Upper West Side. And then they sent me pictures and, and we just started the ball rolling. And uh, uh, I can't say for sure it was my godfather's company. However, the material used on the job, I had the exact colors, uh, old material from my godfather's mosaic company. And the method that was used kind of went in line with what they did. And uh, so for me, it was a joy to be you know, part of it. So you were able to detect both in the tesserae themselves and in the method by which they were yes. applied that exactly yeah the, from the from the colors itself we had the exact material the 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 method uses something called the indirect method where the tesserae are glued to paper surface mounted so the mosaic is made in a mirror image uh, with water soluble glue it gives you a very specific kind of surface once the mosaic is finished. I noticed that that's how the mosaic was made, and uh, along with the, the same color of material. And, but there was also another thing because... I'm going to yeah, interrupt for just sure. a second, because you make a fascinating point that every one of these is hand cut, right? Just yes, well, basically it's hand cut, not in the studio, but it's hand... The tessera are made from a pancake. If you envision a pancake of glass that's sliced with a glass cutter, and then with a guillotine cut, so each of those stones has its, its, its a different thickness because it's all been hand cut. Then obviously when they're working, they cut by hand also anything you know, to make angles or uh, any of the shapes where, they, where it has to be cut. Uh, 
There was one other thing. The people, I, I had been around my godfather's studio from the time I was five years old. I knew how they mixed colors. The background was very rich. You know, you look at it, it's one color. Right, but there's right. 20, 30 colors in there. Yes. And also well, it's yes, playful. It's see. very yeah. playful, which was something Max was, and even his personality. So even within that kind of cream color, there were oranges, blues, yellow, all different colors spotting it out. But I just kind of had the sense, yeah, this is what my godfather's company would have done. So, like I said, I can't say for sure, but uh, my gut feeling is they, they did that mosaic. I was going to say, so not only is it the circumstantial uh, evidence, the empirical evidence, but a, a spirit. Yeah, it was a kind of a, a feeling about it, you know? And, and it's very interesting, and I'll tell you a funny story, because, you know, when you go to the site, you see everything finished. It's not how you work on a job. So there were two main trenches, left and right, that, that were cut out. Well, I took samples from the right side, because on the left, people were putting up stonework, and I couldn't get to it. And I made a mix to match that background. Right. I matched it pretty good. We made the mosaic for the left side and the right side, but the, the, the way the schedule was, we had to install on the left. I installed that bottom piece. When I took the paper off, I said, it's all the right colors, but the combination of colors is wrong. And I said, something, so, which often happens in a mosaic, because when you have 30, 20, 20, 30 colors in a mix, you're basically taking it out of a box and just laying it down. Often, what happens, you have the tendency to throw out, you don't use everything. You tend to keep the smaller material and put it aside. What happens is, at the end of, you could end up with more of one color in a mix. Yes. You don't see the gradation from one side to the other, but it was different. So we actually had to redo one section at the bottom. Wow. Because of, because of that kind of, just the combination. Instead of 10% of one color, maybe it was 8%. You know? It sounds somewhat analogous to the experience I've heard described of the, the, the great sign painters of the, of, the, of the old days when okay. we used to paint signs on buildings. And you could be working on a very close section and say, okay, this is absolutely right, and then stand across oh, the street back. and say, Yeah, it's Holy completely smokes. different. Right. right. Well, yeah, the, the whole thing, uh, mosaics, you're always squinting. <laughs> because, because you have to kind of step back and really look and see what the effect is. It's very difficult when you're just up close to it. So it involves both. Now, this is a fascinating, here's a contrast. There's right. that chase right. for the conduit right. that was cut through. And look, if you can, you can. It's, and what's interesting, too, is a lot of the, there was one old photograph that I could find of the original mural. There were some shapes that I had to figure out, well, what actually happened here? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because the, the trench went through certain different shapes. There was a couple of places where I had to imagine because the photographs we had kind of ended just shy oh. of, of the full mural. Right. And so we, we, we took, had to take a little liberty just to go, okay, this is where that line must have gone. Um, and it, you know, it was, uh, it was really a very interesting job that kind of just dropped in my lap, you know, out of nowhere. How wonderful. And it was, uh, it was fun working on it, to be honest. Just my relationship, you know, obviously with my godfather, but also Max was a real special guy, and I just really have fond memories of him. So I should was, say, too, uh, if, if you have not yet gone to see this mural, uh, we couldn't have made it any easier for you uh, than to have it at, at 6th Avenue and 40th Street. And if, <laughs> if, if you leave this neighborhood this evening without having gone over there to see it, uh, you're, you're doing yourself an enormous disfavor. Because, and, it's, and it's wonderful, too, Stephen, to hear you speak about your, uh, you know, the, your uh, godfather's spirit because exuberant, I think, was one of the first words that I used as I was trying to describe this to readers. It right. is, it is absolutely that. Right. I see we're very close to the end of our time, but before I let you go, tell us about um, Hudson Yards 34th Street. Cause you're yeah, we just, uh, well, they just opened Hudson uh, Yards, the 34th and 11th Street subway station. Uh, 7th Avenue Extension, I believe it's called. We did two ceilings. One as you enter the station going down the escalator and then an elliptical dome uh, at the main part of the station. It, it's a very unique piece for, the, for uh, you know, MTA arts and design. Uh, and there's a third ceiling yet to be done across the street. 
uh, which will be probably next year. And we'll, we we'll come back next year we'll for Summit and, and we'll talk, talk about that. We can talk about that. Thank so, you all uh, very much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks.